over the last seven, eight years, I've tried many different settings on the pedals I used from very stiff, short travel movement to long and soft and anything in between. So I want to share what I found over those years of experience and what you should consider when you are setting your pedals. If you are one of those drivers who have heard that the really fast, hardcore DNA racing cars use brick-like super hard pedal, but the video you have seen suggests the opposite, I will try to explain what are the differences between those two settings and what are the benefits and the negatives. First, the hard non-travel brake can achieve quickly maximum force of brake pressure, and that can be difference up to one tenth from the long travel, but that doesn't mean this is the optimal braking. We all know that how quick the car will slow down strongly depends on how much grip the tires have with the surface, but that grip is very dynamic force which changes dramatically through all different phases even if we brake on the straight. In different speed, the mass of the car creates different force, but also those top class cars can create incredible amount of down forces which gives even more grip to the tires. But that grip change dramatically with the different speed. Therefore, in cars, for example, can brake on maximum brake force on very high speed where the down force is creating incredible grip, but the drivers have to gradually release the pressure of the pedal while decreasing the speed. I read those cars need up to 160 kg pressure on the brake pedal to achieve that maximum disc to pad friction. But let's don't forget those cars can create up to 5G, which really helps a lot the driver leg. In sim racing we don't need 160 kilo as there is no g-forces to help our movement. So I found through my experience for sim racing hard pedal with very low movement can be beneficial for those high downforce cars as I can achieve much quicker maximum braking pressure but I personally have much less control on the pedal through all the different phases of the braking itself. I'm not precise at lifting of the pedal and even worse, I can feel my trail braking and after 30 minutes my leg hurts and I don't even have the power to reach that 100% anymore. I use my brake like that for several months and at the end, I injure my knee. I know some people out there advertise the precise muscle memory which can be achieved through the almost non-moving pedal and I hope you don't buy that story as we can perfectly create super precise muscle memory through little movement as well. Much more complex movements than just pushing with a leg. Look, the complex finger movements from this virtuos, that's muscle memory as well. My personal opinion is short travel brake are mostly beneficial for high downforce cars to reach quickly that max force and if you want to use your pedal like that, at least don't use it with more than 70 kilo force and save your knee from injury. We are sim racers and no one pays us millions to do that. Remember, if you f***ed up your knee, you will not just stop enjoying your hobby, but you will suffer much deeper even in your sleep. Let's see now the softer pedal with movement. As we know, brake is not used just to stop the car, to go around series of corners or even single corner as fast as possible. We control the car not just with the steering wheel, but with the pedals as well. I talk about the different forces on the car, which can be created through trial braking, pushing or lifting the throttle, which can transfer the grip on the different tires and help the car rotate better around the corner and for me personally the softer pedal with little movement helps so much more my precision in those road and rally cars which I mostly drive. I personally feel having that medium movement in the pedal with medium stiffness helps me create better control and better muscle memory. That's not scientifically proven but I feel for my brain it's much easier to create that precise memory through little movement and pressure instead of just pressure and it's so much easier to control the car around series of corners. My pedal pressure is set to 53 kilo for one very important reason. That's actually what my knee and muscle can tolerate for 3-4 hours per day drive without any loss of performance from my leg and most importantly zero pain when I finish. Now that is not some gold number but what I found I can personally tolerate and can be much more or less for you. 
we are all different and we can tolerate even pain differently. I also found which is the best travel for the brake to be able to remove the force quickly enough for more responsive weight transfer. If it's too long the weight transfer becomes slower and the car more sluggish when I try to change quickly direction. So. I believe there is no universal settings for all cases and will definitely be beneficial to use minimum travel for high downforce cars where we have to brake as quick and fast possible without working too much with the pedal in mid corner but for those road soft cars little travel can help the precision. Of course both settings can work in both scenarios and I strongly suggest to be tested because you have to find which of those settings will work personally for you and your driving style. If someone tried to sell you his opinion, don't buy it. Go check both settings and see with which one you feel more comfortable because your own comfort will give you much better results. Here are the steps I use every time when I set new pedals. First, I make sure I sit firmly in the seat without any gaps in my lower back. One of the reasons I use belts is to keep me in that position and every time I smash the brake hard my body doesn't move back and all the pressure goes instantly to the brake. Next step is to put the pedals high enough and the pedal plate meet the level of the support point of my back. If that is set correctly, next step is the angle of the pedal. I must have minimum movement on my ankle through the entire face of the braking. If I don't isolate my gaff muscle and my ankle moves, I found my legs start shaking, particularly when the adrenaline kicks in. I try to control the brake with the big leg muscle and minimum ankle movement. Once I'm done with that, I try to find the sweet spot of the hardness and the movement. Not too hard to make sure my leg muscle can perform 100% for a few hours drive without pain in my knee and not too much travel to make sure I can quickly apply max pressure but also release the pressure quickly for fast weight transfer of the car. At the end of the day there is not right and wrong settings and both non-travel and travel pedal movement can have benefits for different cars. Make sure you test both options for some extended period of time and see which one really gives you that little bit more comfort and precision. Much love sim racers, see you in the next one.